Hi, we're going to talk for a few minutes about what second grade students in College Station ISD will be learning in math for the first nine weeks. And this is actually part two of the first nine weeks video series for second grade. And so if you haven't found um, part one, you might want to go back and find that. And after you finish this, you might want to watch part three. So let's look at an overview of what second graders are going to be doing during the first nine weeks. They're going to start off solving addition and subtraction problems up to 20 because that's where they left off in first grade. So that's where we're going to start in second. And then they're going to work on using attributes to classify 2D and 3D shapes and solids. And then they're going to review um, what they learned about time, telling time in first grade. And then they're going to start using the non-standard standard algorithm to solve one-step problems with up to two two-digit numbers. And on this video, we're going we're gonna, to um, focus on the geometry, the 2D and 3D shapes, as, and also telling time. So in second grade, they're going to classify and sort polygons with 12 or fewer sides according to attributes, including identifying the number of sides and the number of vertices. And to be a polygon, it has to have straight sides, no curves, and it has to be closed, no openings. And so they're going to use sides and vertices to identify and classify these shapes. And a vertex is when we're referring to one single corner. But if we're referring to more than one corner on a, a 2D shape or a 3D um, solid, we use the word vertices, that's the plural form. And they're going to need to look at shapes that are regular and irregular. So a regular shape is something like this. We're used to seeing rectangles that look like this. And we're used to seeing hexagons that look like this. But we're not so used to seeing a hexagon that looks like this or this. So we want them to have experience with shapes that are regular and irregular. And, and um, when it's an irregular shape, that's when they really have to know what are the, the identifying attributes for a shape. How many sides should it have? How many vertices should it have? So they're also going to create two-dimensional shapes based on given attributes, including number of sides and vertices. So we might ask them, create a shape that has five vertices and five sides. And they might create a regular pentagon, or they might create something that looks very different, but as long as it has five vertices and five sides, then they've created what we've asked. And regardless of whether it looks like a traditional pentagon or not, um, it is a pentagon if it has five sides and five vertices. So they can draw shapes with markers, crayons, pencils. They could also, um, you could take a cookie sheet or something that has sides that can kind of contain it and put a, a thin layer of sand or salt or shaving cream. And they could practice drawing shapes, you know, with given attributes and something like that, just to make it a little more fun. They could also create shapes with spaghetti noodles. Maybe, you know, you give them some spaghetti noodles and they can break them into segments and put them together and make shapes. And they could use Play-Doh and make these shapes. They could cut them out of paper or tear them out of paper. You know, the more experiences they have with different ways of making these shapes and talking about the attributes, the more that they remember it, the more that it makes sense to them. So they're going to classify and sort three-dimensional solids, including spheres, cones, cylinders, rectangular prisms, including cubes as special rectangular prisms, and triangular prisms based on attributes using formal geometric language. So we've already talked about um, vertices when we're talking about more than one corner, a vertex if we're just referring to one specific corner. A face is the flat surface with straight edges, and an edge is where two faces touch. And you can see that on the little diagram there. So these are the shapes that um, they are going to talk about spheres, cones, cylinders, rectangular prisms, including cubes, and triangular prisms. And so that's the minimum that they're going to talk about. They may um, touch on some other shapes also. When it says including, it means it has to include this, but you might go beyond that. 
So they, if they are sorting them, it might be in a chart like this, where they put the shapes that have less than six vertices in one um, column, one that has exactly six vertices in another, and one that has more than six vertices in the last one. So we see, you know, this example of a sphere. It is just one large curved surface. It has no vertices, it has no edges, it has no faces. Um, this um, cone, this birthday hat, it has one circular face and then a curved surface. And so it has no vertices and um, no edges, no faces. Well, it has a face, it has a circular face. Um, this has two circular faces and one curved surface, a cylinder. And the triangular prisms have exactly six vertices. So we see here, here, and here, that's three. And then on the other end, four, five, and six. And a Toblerone is a great example of a triangular prism. So this is a rectangular prism, and it has one, two, three, four vertices on this end, and then five, six, seven, eight on the other end. So a total of eight vertices, which is more than six. And then this um, shape is also a rectangular prism um, because it has eight vertices, six faces, and 12 edges, just like this rectangular prism. But we give this one a special name because all of the faces are congruent. They're all the same size, they're all the same shape. And so we call that a cube. But a cube could also be called a rectangular prism. Then they're also going to compose two-dimensional shapes and three-dimensional shapes with given properties of attributes. So we might ask them, make a solid figure with eight vertices, six equal faces, and 12 edges. Make a shape with eight vertices and eight sides. They could use um, straws and little balls of Play-Doh to build 3D shapes. Or they could use straws and mini marshmallows, straws and spaghetti noodles, um, straws and tooth, I mean, um, little balls of Play-Doh or marshmallows with toothpicks to build the 3D shapes. And then they can draw the 2D shapes again all the different ways, you know, drawing it with pencils, crayons, pens, um, drawing it with their finger and salt or, or um, rice or, or shaving cream, anything that you can put on a cookie sheet. So you can, can have fun with that. They also are going to decompose or take apart two-dimensional shapes, such as cutting out a square from a rectangle, dividing a shape in half, or partitioning a rectangle into identical triangles, and identify the resulting geometric parts. So if you took this rectangle and you divided it this way, then now you have a square which is a rectangle, a special rectangle. And then you also have a rectangle that is not a square. And, and if we'd taken that line and drawn it um, diagonally here, we would have created two, um, tri two triangles. So we show that we can take shapes and divide them different ways and then come up with new shapes and, and identify the new shapes that we've created. They're also going to spend some time reading and writing time to the nearest hour and half hour using analog, you know, traditional clocks with, with hands and digital clocks and distinguishing between a.m. and p.m. So if I am eating breakfast at 7 a.m., is 7 a.m. in the morning or is it in the evening? You know, I am, um, I get home from supper, uh, I mean, I get home and eat supper at 4.30, is that 4.30 a.m.? or 4.30 p.m. So, and when they're telling time to the nearest hour and half hour now, hour right now, that is actually a review of a skill that they've learned in first grade. Um, by the end of second grade, they're gonna be telling time to the nearest minute, but we're gonna, we're gonna build up to that. So we're gonna starting now with to the nearest hour and half hour, and then um, we'll you know, go to the nearest five minutes or, or maybe the nearest 15 minutes and then nearest five minutes and then eventually to the nearest minute. That is um, something that second graders tend to have a lot of problems with. So we've broken it down into several smaller steps to help them get to the end goal that by the end of the year, they can tell time to the nearest minute. So um, if you want something uh, to use for your child to practice, 
some of these skills at home, you can go to our CSISD curriculum page um, and there's a, a parent section. And then if you click on resources, there are um, resources listed there by different topics. So if you want to work on telling time, you click on time. If you want to work on um, 2D shapes or 3D shapes, you can click on that topic and then it will take you to a list of resources. Most of them are websites that you can click on and your child can practice um, with that particular topic. And there's a note here about thinking blocks. Really doesn't apply to the content from, from this video, but we will be talking more about it in part one and two, um, three of the first nine weeks for second graders. So thank you for listening. Um, there's gonna be a new um, little suite of videos for second grade math at the beginning of each nine weeks. So stay tuned and, and check back, you know, to see what else is coming up. And if you still have questions or comments or just you know need some more information, be sure to contact your child's teacher or the math specialist from your campus. If you go to the website listed here, it lists all the math specialists from across College Station ISD, and you can find the one from your campus and um, send them an email or, or call them and ask them questions as well. So again, thank you for um, joining with us and have fun learning math with your child.